Hello and welcome to Candid Conversations with Sherilyn and Tammy. We are back today for another authentic conversation about whatever it is that we need help in, whatever area the devil's lying to us about, whatever lie we've been believing. And today we are going to be talking about a different kind of fear than last week. Last week we talked about a fear that puts us in chains and it can be in lots and lots of different areas. But now we're going to talk about today a fear that is almost like a hurdle or an obstacle and it stops us and prevents us from doing what God's called us to do. And so I'm excited to hear about it. We're actually going to get a little bit of a treat because Sherilyn, we're really getting some of the things that you get to share with people when you are one-on-one -on -one, um, coaching and mentoring. So I'm excited about that. But before you start, I want to remind everybody we are on YouTube as well. So if you are watching on YouTube um, and you want to subscribe, um, like, I mean, there's so many things you can do, do them all. <laughs> if you think the content that you're receiving here is worth passing on to someone else, then we want you to do that because that's what we want to do. Our heart is to help other people that um, deal with the same stuff that we do. So we are going to get started today. Doubt and fear in the assignment. What has yeah. that so you know what whenever i have conversation with my clients one-on-one -on -one or in groups or even with potential clients and i begin to sense a theme emerging because i've seen or i've heard the same question over and over and over again i know god is putting um, wants to say something about it and so then i feel more freely because i don't share the conversations i have with my clients but i can share more freely at a broader level because this is something that his daughters because that's mainly who i serve women his daughters are dealing with and so this question has come up multiple times about when we are being when we feel like we are being asked of god to do something and then all the reasons why we can't we shouldn't we won't uh that's impossible um that's not my gifting that's not my skill set all the things come against us with doubt and fear for why we can't operate in that assignment why we can't do what god's called us to do and so one of the questions that i was asked was I find it hard to believe that he would actually choose me. Wow. And while I appreciate the humility in that statement, sometimes the enemy likes to come at us with lies that says, oh, you're getting too big for your britches there, Sherilyn. And that idea came from you. Wow. And there have been seasons in my life where God has, you know, directed me to you know begin to step out and start speaking um speaking publicly be becoming to be guests on podcasts that's the season we're both walking in right now where tammy and i are you know on other people's podcasts sharing their stories our stories with other people so that we can get we can walk in this next chapter that god has for us this speaking chapter he has for us but i can tell you from my own life whenever i began to get visions of seeing myself on stage or get dreams about that or people would say that to me or they see this on me i would get paralyzed in fear in the sense that oh my gosh like well who am i why should that be me what what do i have to share what kind of contribution is that and then I'm hearing from people who, you know, I, I have someone that I know who is being called to run for office. This is political, a political office. This person doesn't have a political bone in their body. And they're like, what? Like, where would I get this crazy idea? But God is stirring and he's beginning mm -hmm. to ask people to step out into an assignment, which may seem like something that we're not equipped for. Well, Hebrews 13, 21 says in the Sherilyn version, God has equipped us with everything we need. Like, and so if that means that's what he's done, that's if that's my paraphrase, <laughs> if that's what he's done, that he's going to equip us, if he's going to guide us in what he's called us to do, then there's safety there. But I want to kind of just put a little bit of light on this fear that comes because I want you to know that you're not alone. We're in very good company. So if you are asking yourself why it should be me, what if people who I tell that I'm called to do this don't believe I've actually heard from God on this, or 
hey, God, please send somebody else. <laughs> then you're in good company. And as I was asking God, you know, mm -hmm. to kind of say, what is it you have for your daughters today? What is it you have for your sons? This is where he led me to kind of park today. He wanted me to talk about the story of Moses. And so Mo the story of Moses, particular section of Moses is in Exodus, Exodus chapter three and chapter four. And so the very first question, you know, here God is saying, I am sending you <laughs> Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites out of Egypt. Now, if we all think about, ooh, I want to hear from God and I want it to be a really powerful moment where I know, like I know, like I know it's the voice of God. We all want the audible. We all want the show up in the room, walk through the wall, whatever, <laughs> burning bush moment. This is the, if there's ever a time when you want God to get your attention, this bush is on fire. It draws Moses' attention and then God speaks from it. So out of all the stories in the Bible where God speaks, this is one of the most powerful examples. And we all like, oh, if I could just have a burning bush. Well, here is the burning bush mo moment. And Moses is like, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? <laughs> And God's like, but I mean, that's his first question. Why should it be me? And so God says, I will be with you. And mm -hmm. this will be the sign that I have sent my, you know, that I'm going to be sending my people out of Egypt. And then Moses is like, so for like 10 verses, Moses is wrestling with the question, why should it be me? And then the next question Moses asks in the beginning of chapter four, verse one, he, Moses says, what if they don't believe that I've even heard from you? Mm. What if they say the Lord did not speak? Mm. The Lord did not speak to you. So we've all been in that. Well, what if I tell somebody? What if I tell my friend, Tammy, that this is what I've heard from God? And she's like, <laughs> you didn't hear from God. That's not his voice. He doesn't show up in a burning bush. <laughs> You're like, what if this? And so God is like encouraging Moses. OK, what's in your hand? And he says, well, there's a staff in my hand. And so then God leads Moses through all the signs that he's going to do. And he's mm -hmm. throw it on the ground. And so Moses throws it on the ground and it becomes a snake. And he's like, what the heck is this? Because let's remember, Moses grew up in Egypt. He was raised alongside the Pharaoh. He's going to go confront to say, let my people go. And so he was raised around all of this stuff. So he's seeing this sign and he's likening it to stuff he used to see the magicians do. But God is showing him, hey, I am more powerful than the things you saw these magicians do. These are going to be the signs and wonders I'm going to display to Pharaoh to show that not only that I sent these to you. And so all of these things, he says, but Lord, what if they don't believe me? <laughs> they don't believe the second sign or the third. And so, you know, God is playing along. Okay, if they don't believe those two signs, then take some water and throw it on the ground. So he does all of this stuff. He's with Moses in the wrestling of what if they didn't hear? What if they don't believe I heard from you? What if I do all these signs and they still don't believe? What if I'm walking this out, God, and they see that I'm having your favor on this activity, but they still don't believe that I'm called to you know, this assignment? And so then finally, like 10 verses later, right, he's been wrestling with God. You know, why send me? You know, what if they don't believe me? Then in chapter four, verse 10, Moses says, pardon me, God. <laughs> I have never been one that's been eloquent. I am slow to speech and I have a mumbling tongue. Mm. For somebody else. And so here, this is now the third place of doubt third place of god are you sure and can you please send someone else like yeah this really assignment this really assignment is just really not for me mm -hmm. god just has to flat out come to him and confront him and be like who gave humans their mouth and he meets him right in that spot of his most insecurity where he's like yeah i just don't speak well mm -hmm. well i can tell you there have been times when i have been you know, even in this show where, where words will come out of my mouth and they'll come out the wrong way. And I'll be like, oh, Lord, just fix it. <laughs> or just ignore what I said. Spit out, you know, chew up the meat and spit out the bones. And those are one of the bones. Just let it go. And there's places where we understand when we're faced with, OK, God, I'm just trying to do what you've asked me to do. But can you please send someone else? And God flat out confronts that place of insecurity and says, now go. I will help you. 
And then he does it again. So God, says, I will help you. And he says, God, send someone mm. else. So <laughs> four times, four times, you know, why me? You know, what if they don't believe me? But I have I have these insecurities and then flat out send someone else. And that's it's only until then when God gets frustrated or as the NIV says, the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he says, fine, what about your brother? <laughs> You're not, not going. I'm just sending him with you. Mm -hmm. And so here we have this, you know, beautiful story of Moses wrestling with the idea of something God has asked him to do. This is Moses, right? This is who we're, we look at in the Bible as a patriarch that says, oh, look, he led the people out of Egypt. But here we have him in his flat out insecurities in the very beginning of his journey when he's like, oh, no, 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 right? not me. Don't send me back there to those people who, you know, who saw me murder somebody and bury them in the sand like that. Don't send me there. Those Israelites aren't going to believe me. Don't, you know, they're going to remember all of the horrible things I was. And I, now I have to go back as a leader of this movement of people. And God's like, I am going to help you. I will teach you what it is you need to stay. So take your staff and go. Hmm. And I, what I love about this is God knew Moses was going to wrestle. Right. So he gets his attention with the burning bush, the most iconic get attention getter in one of the whole Bible. Right. And then he talks to Moses about it for 32 verses. Wow. 32 verses. God addresses his fears. Now, we don't know how long this conversation was. This could have been, you know, a 10 minute prayer. M most likely not. This is, you know. We know that, um, who was it? Uh, Jacob wrestled with God all night long. This could have been a very lengthy conversation with God in the desert in front of this, you know, burning bush where he tells him, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. And even still, that wasn't enough. And so here God uses all of this time. So if you are questioning, if you are doubting, let me encourage you, take these questions to God and process them with him. Just sit in his presence and say, okay, God, I am wrestling with these doubts. I am wrestling with the why me? I am wrestling with all these insecurities that bubble up because here's what I know to be true. When we feel like there's something bubbling up to the surface, whether it's an emotion, um, whether it is a thought that's coming up, we bring those to God and we lay them at his feet. And then we say, hey, God, what is this? What is this thing I'm feeling? I'm feeling some sort of way. I don't like this reaction that's coming out of me. Or or we do like the reaction and we're like, yeah, you're asking me to do this. And, and my gut reaction says, no, it doesn't feel spirit led. This kind of feels like me. You know, is this really me? And then those doubts begin to play on us. And he says, I want you to bring these to me. I want to have a dialogue with you. And he guides Moses through each and every one. And then we have other examples in the Bible. It's not just Moses who doubted their calling. We can talk about Jonah, who was like, I don't want to go because he didn't really have a love for the people of Nineveh. So he's just like, I'm just not going. I'm not going. I don't want to see those people set free. So he could very well be calling you to a place of people. And this is for somebody. I'm feeling the presence of the Lord really heavy right now that God is calling you into a place where you had for a while lacks of love for these people. He's calling you into an environment to be a voice and you can't see yourself there because you have had such judgment for them in the past. Mm -hmm. And God is going to set you free. I just feel that over you. So whoever's watching, if that is you, message us and let us know because we want you know to have that word confirmed that we heard accurately. So I hear that's for somebody. And, and here we have Jonah who was just like rejecting. I'm not going. I'm not going. But God was so determined to use Jonah in this redemption story that, you know, he chased him. He chased him with a storm. He he chased him with a fish. And he used the, you know, he used the environment to kind of put a little bit of pressure. And, and Tammy and I were talking about this, you know, pre-show about there's sometimes God puts a little bit of pressure on us to get us to be like, okay, fine. You're not going to make the right decision on your own. I'm going to 
you know, put you inside of a little bit of a pressure cooker and you're going to feel it knowing that this is me. I want you to do this. I'm not going to send you to go evangelize to a bunch of Ninevites just for the sake of having a little bit of sport. That's not God. He <laughs> has he, this. This was his heart for the people of Nineveh. And so then another example that was coming to mind as I was putting this together was Esther. And mm -hmm. so here we have, you know, she was essentially um, taken from her you know, community and she's put as a concubine in the king's house. And like, and he's going to go through all these girls and he's going to find the one that's going to be queen. And that's like, you know, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. But so she, you know, she's doing what she's forced to do. And then she's given an opportunity where she's told that her people are being persecuted. And now she has to, she has favor. She's been chosen as the queen and she's been asked, she's been put there. God put her there in advance and she's been put there and God is now asking, you know, she's been asked to go in front of the king and ask him to save her people. And she's like, oh no, <laughs> I lose my head. Like they could kill me for this. And Mordecai says to her, if you don't do this, God is going to bring deliverance another way. Mm. And so we have all of these places. Now, she eventually said yes. She fasted about it. She prayed about it. That's what the season of Purim is all about. And God gave her wisdom and a strategy for how to do that. We can talk about that another time. But here we have these people whose stories are in the Bible, and they wrestled with saying yes to what God had. And they wrestled with all of the doubts. I'm going to die. I don't love these people. They have committed all kinds of sin and atrocities against you, God. And then, oh, yeah, they know my baggage. They know my past. I was raised around these people. They won't believe me. Mm -hmm. All of the stuff, right, that comes up against us whenever we're faced with an assignment, God is saying, I have got you. If he's going to send you, if he's going to call you, he's going to equip you. And so we have to, but I don't recommend you going into this alone. I recommend that you have somebody coming alongside you who can help you hear from the voice of God and get the confirmations that you need. Um, and that's part of where some of these conversations came from. The conversations I'm having with my clients are, hey, I think I'm hearing God about this, hmm. but that sounds terrifying. Right. Welcome to the club. Yes. Welcome to the do it afraid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and sometimes it's really not about whether or not, you know, sometimes the enemy places that fear in front of us, like you said, Tammy, to be an obstacle to keep us from not moving forward. Mm -hmm. What the enemy puts up as a do not enter sign, God is inviting us into a detour to kind of say, okay, well, the enemy likes to put that in your track, in your, in your path to kind of say, well, you know, it's not going to be you. And God's like, oh, we're going to go around that. Do not mm -hmm. sign. And we're gonna we're gonna keep going because I am I am calling you here. And if I'm gonna call you here, I'm gonna equip you with everything that you need to get there. So yeah. I hope that encouraged you. If it did, please let us know. Let us know in the chat. Let's have a conversation about where you are and let us encourage you. Um, because this is why we show up every week to yeah. kind of share with you what is where the enemy is speaking about us in our lives against our family. Like last week, Tammy's testimony was so powerful about how God, you know, how the enemy was coming against her family and how, you know, God delivered her from that. And this time it's how the enemy comes against us and our assignment, um, what he's called us to be and do in this next season. Because I tell you what, as the remnant begins to stand up and as the bride of Christ begins to walk forward, the enemy is going to tell you all kinds of reasons why you can't you shouldn't it's not you you didn't hear it correctly and you need to know like you know like you know that you heard the voice of god and have the confidence that he's going to give you the clarity that you need to move forward even if he just shows you a sliver of the step at the beginning you know what i love the most about what you said because i can completely relate is when you said we all want that sign I've said that. Oh, God, if you want me to do that, like, I really need you to let me know, because that is terrifying. I've asked for that. And then I'm sitting here thinking, he had it. Moses had it. And yet it still did not calm those concerns and doubts and fears. And so that tells me that we need to get over not that God won't give us signs because he's so generous. He's so kind. He's so loving. He does. I'm not saying that we don't need that or shouldn't ask for that. 
But there's a point where we need to understand that we just need to just be like, okay, we're going for this. You know, we need that little fire lit underneath us to say, I've lost a lot of time. And I want to say this too, and I don't know if this has happened to you. Hi, Shirley. Um, if this has ever happened to you, this is something that happened to me. I, 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 I became into the, to the Lord, to know the Lord in the, in the nineties and um, the church that I was in almost scared me to ever step out in what God called me to do because they made me think it was, might be premature that if I really didn't hear from God, the devil was going to eat my lunch, that I better have confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. And what that did to a rule following little girl who was already bound, it just made me more afraid to ever step out. And so I kind of had my security blanket that said, well, you know, you didn't have all those confirmations and you know, you, and so I don't know if that's happened to you, let us know because that's what happened to me. Yeah. I was too afraid. And I don't think God, I know God is not the kind of God that if we think we heard him, then, and we step out because we really do believe that he showed us that to do that, whatever. He's not going to be mad at us if we missed it. He's not like that. Remember we read one of Psalms 103. He's a good father. He doesn't look for our faults. He's just like, go, go baby girl, go son. I'm so proud of you. So yeah. there's a, I think a lot of times we let, we kind of get comfortable with that fear and we hold on to it because it is safer, right? It's safer. <laughs> to hold on to that fear like a comfort. And there's wisdom too in waiting to hear from the Lord to kind of say it's time to go. But what the enemy likes to do is like you were saying, he likes to hold us back with as much delay as possible so that we don't step out into those things. But if we can take the lesson from Moses and even take the lesson from Esther of God and, and even Jonah, it's he's with us in the wrestle. He's with us in and in so many ways, he factors that in to the timing of us actually doing what we're supposed to doing. So if you are someone who are like, oh, yeah, I totally missed God. I was supposed to be moving forward and I'm not. This is why he's the redeemer of time. Yes. He can redeem things. And I love that how Romans 828 says he can he will restore all the things that, you know, that we, for our good, for those who were called according to his purpose. And so if we are supposed to be doing what we're, what he's asked us to do, and we get stuck in a delay, we fall for a lie, we get stuck in fear or in doubt, or, or even like something comes against us, then we can end up in a place where we think that, oh, well, then all of a sudden I'm disqualified because I missed it without thinking that he loves us so much that he's factored that in to the timing of us getting it done. And so then there's grace there, even in the mistakes, even in the, okay, slow to the uptake, you know, or then, but you know, at the same time though, we can miss out and be in full disobedience when we know we've heard and we're just waiting on one more confirming word. Yeah. When we're like, I know that God spoke to me about this. I know I'm supposed to be doing this. I know I'm supposed to be following on this, but I just need one more confirmation. And that here we have, this is when, when, when the Lord got angry at Moses, he's like, you don't need that because mm -hmm. I am going with you. And what's so beautiful about this is let's just fast forward a little bit into the book of Exodus where Moses realizes that God is with him so much that he's like, I'm not going anywhere. And you're, unless I know that your presence is going with me. And then uh, that change, we're like, what happened in his relationship with God? Yeah. That he got to a place where I am now not going to go because even if you are going with me to, I'm not going, a, I'm not moving a single granular of sand until I know, like, I know, like, I know, like, I know you're with me. Like, I don't want you to send someone else to lead me. You know, forget it, God. I don't want an angel. I want your presence or nothing. Yeah. And to be able to, to be able to step out in that kind of confidence is what we want to impart to you. Mm -hmm. Shirley says that God is our biggest cheerleader. He yeah. absolutely is our biggest cheerleader to know that he's, and he's going to be there to catch us in the process mm -hmm. of, you know, of anything we might possibly think we could even mess up in the timing of it. Absolutely. And you know what? We always want to remind everybody that God's love is not dependent on you saying yes. Um, it is not going to earn you more love. He adores you as it is. 
But the thing is, is we don't want to miss out on the wonderful things that God has for us because it's a wonderful thing to be into that sweet spot with God. So it has separate the love, the who from the do, separate that. But we also don't want to miss out, right? I know nobody wants to miss out. But you know what? Sherilyn and I have been scared at times too. We have to conquer those things too. I'm not going to lie. There are things that I believe that God has for me that absolutely terrify me. And there's times that I think, well, I think I'd rather just be okay right here, right here on Facebook, <laughs> you know, but we are in a time where we, it, it would behoove us and bless us to just say yes and do it afraid. Mm -hmm. I said, just do it afraid. Yeah. Yes becomes our biggest gift to God. Just like we say yes to salvation, we say yes to our assignment. And there are so many people that just are happy to be like, you know what? I got the salvation card. I'm good. And then they don't ever press into the deeper, bigger things that God has for them. But we are meant to be tools. We are meant to have be the vessel which other people experience God. And we are meant to be we have an assignment. And, you know, I love what Shirley is, is drawing out here in the chat. She said that, you know, at one point God told her he was going to give her assignment to somewhere else, to someone else. And that does happen. We yeah. see where, you know, we can be like, well, you didn't do it. So I'm going to give it to somebody else. And mm -hmm. then just get to partner with, all right, that's fine. Yeah. Because we have the, there's a couple different versions. And I kind of want to touch on this a minute because I feel like this is where God is leading me for a second is we feel like there's a couple of different yeses we could give God. There's the yes, you know, I'll do that. And then there's the better yes and the best yes. And they're all yeses. They'll all be blessed. But when he's calling you to do something big and you say no, it doesn't mean that you are not going to also get blessed. It just means that he's not good. There's going to be things he cannot and will not do through you because you didn't say yes to the bigger thing. And I can, there's some examples that I have, you know, in my own life. And, you know, I, um, where I know that there was a specific, there's, there's a specific person I know was given a specific calling to God to step out and be a pastor and they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And God still has blessed their family, you know, many generations blessed their family. But what would have happened if they had said yes? How could that have looked different if they had said yes? And we often get into the place of, oh, man, what could my what could what could have been different? What could God have been doing through me mm -hmm. if I had just said yes? Because Moses didn't know what he was going to be walking into. Mo he, he had no idea that he was going to be parting the Red Sea and be one of the most, you know, like he, he was going to be facing that and God was going to show up and that God was going to turn, you know, feed the entire Israelites with, you know, manna and then quail from heaven. Like God, he didn't know any of that. He didn't know that water was going to come through a rock. He didn't know all of the different ways God was going to show up and through him um, by listening to God and leading his people. He just said he wrestled he wrestled and he wrestled and he gave God the doubts. And so I hope this has been encouraging to you. Yeah. Today. Catherine Coleman had mentioned the same thing that God told her that he had actually asked, I think a couple other men to do what she did. And they said, no. And so wow. there's been a couple of times in my life where I felt like God gave me an idea for an actual invention. And I piddled around and piddled around. And the next thing I know, you know, a year or two later, it's out. And yeah. it's not because God's punishing us at all. It's just that his, his invitation, because that's what it is. Oh, wow. It is a glorious invitation to partner with God. It's not a requirement to get into heaven. It's not a requirement to be loved. It's a beautiful invitation. And I think that's what we need to remember. It's yeah. not required. Mm -hmm. but wouldn't you want to come into that? Even when it's scary, wouldn't you want to come into what he's asking you to do? Because yeah. it's a glorious partnership. Yeah. And the thing about the, he's going to release things into the earth, right. whether we partner with him or not. Yeah. It's just that if he's, if he is chosen you with this assignment, like he chose Esther, like he chose Jonah, like he chose Moses, like he chose, and let's just think about it. Here we have the rich young ruler who was like, just tell me what I got to do, God. Mm. And then God gave him something and he's like, no, 
That's mm-hmm. scary. And so there we see Jesus is like, fine. Yep. And I don't know if you've seen the, I don't know if you've seen the series, The Chosen. Yep. There's this part in in the series where he's Jesus is meeting with Nicodemus. And this is, you know, kind of like an out of scripture interpretation of what mm-hmm. happened. But he's meeting with Nicodemus and he and Nicodemus is hungry for what Jesus is talking about. And Jesus is like, come and follow me. Well, there's no record of that in the Bible where but it could have happened where Jesus invited Nicodemus to come follow him. But here we, you know, here we have in the story, in the fiction version of, you know, in The Chosen, how they've done it, they have an invitation for Nicodemus to follow Jesus. And he's like, I just can't. He couldn't lay down his lifestyle. He couldn't lay down all the parties and all of the dinners and all the, the grandbabies. I mean, all of the stuff that he was having a part of his life. He couldn't lay that down. And he grieved over it. He left him an offering. He still blessed Jesus's ministry, but he stood there and grieved because he knew his heart so desperately wanted to say yes, but he just yeah. couldn't. I and when I saw that, that me. Yeah, episode and he was around the corner. Yeah. And he watched from a distance. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. And to think about what an impact. Now, he still had a great impact on the decisions that Sanhedrin was making against Jesus. He was still able to make sure, you know, that, you know, Jesus wasn't accused too early and all of that stuff. But to be able to have been a part of something bigger. And we see, you know, what happened when, you know, the tax collector said yes. What happened when Mary said yes. What happened when John the Baptist said yes. What happened when all of these people said yes to a calling of Jesus. And we think, oh, well, that's not gonna be easy. So I'm just gonna say no, because we like our Christianity comfortable. And let me tell you, there's no power in that. Yeah. So what would your number one advice be for anyone who is, whether it's to go into the political arena, whether it's to go back to school, you know, maybe they're in their fifties and they, and God's kind of laying it on their heart to go back to school, no matter what it is, it doesn't even have to be any, you know, spiritual, you know, calling, but what would be your greatest advice? And then would you pray for them? Yeah. Bring it to God. Yeah. Bring it to God. Bring those wrestling with God and trust him with your yes. Because if there's anybody more trustworthy, it's God. Yeah. If your dream can be trusted in anybody's hands, it's his. So good. And if If he's asking you to do it, he's not asking you to do it alone. Mm-hmm. And this is part of the reason why, you know, we're called to what we're called to do is to come alongside people and help you wrestle with those doubts and then be like, OK, let's get them out. Let's talk about them. Let's let the word of God then speak, because sometimes we get so blinded by all of the doubts we can't sift through what's the enemy's voices and what's our own insecurity Mm -hmm. and so oftentimes it's like okay let's just have a conversation and what could that look like so lord i just pray for each and every one that is watching not just today but who's going to be watching the replay that you would minister to their heart and you would confirm the things that you are asking them to do for the person that's called into politics We just pray, Lord, that you would just, that your anointing, they would just feel it, God. And for the person that's called to go back to school, um, to chase after something else, to pivot what seems like later in life, Lord, Sarah laughed. Sarah laughed at the promise of something else in what she perceived as her old age. Yet you gave her joy and you fulfilled the promise. And so, Father, I just pray that there will be an abundance of yeses that are coming out of today and that you will fill us with the bold confidence to know that not just did we hear your voice, but that you processed our doubts with us and you left us feeling that we were heard, that we were seen, and that we still knew that you were going to go with us and that you were going to empower us and that we could stand on your promise that we are not forsaken, we are not alone, that you have gone with us, that we will hear a voice from behind us saying whether to go to the left or go to the right. And that as we walk this out with you, the Holy Spirit will gently nudge us away from making sure we do not hurt ourselves. The Holy Spirit will gently guide us because you are a good, good father who wants to make sure that you're not setting us up for a fall, God. 
You are not setting us up for shame. You are not setting us up for condemnation. And so when we know that we, you have what you have for us is good, plans for a future and a hope, plans that will prosper us and bless us, Lord, that what you're calling us into is bigger than we can imagine. And so sometimes, God, you only give us a glimmer, a small little piece of what the future has, because we know that you know that if we were to see the whole picture, we would be terrified and we would run. And so I thank you, God, for the even the small pieces of clarity that you are giving us now. Um, when you shine your light to say, this is the next step, take it. Lord, you do it with open, loving arms. And so, Father, I pray, Lord, that we will see your arms as a loving father and we will run towards that next step, knowing that you are right there in that next step for us. And so we thank you, Lord, for the grace and the protection that you have given us over all of our insecurities. And when they bubble up, we can bring them to you and we can say, hey, God, what about this? And you can, just like you did with Moses, spend all the time that we need talking about our insecurities so that we can then be built up in our faith to walk through. Because as we face those things, it builds in us the perseverance and perseverance character to withhold the anointing that you've called us to. So it is not without us wrestling with those things, but we know that where you have called, you will guide us. Where you have called, you will provide for us. And so, Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to be doing in the lives of all of those who are listening today. Yeah. Amen. And the picture I see, this is for all of you that are listening. Um, I, I just see a picture of a bunch of women that are lined up and they've locked arms with each other. You've probably seen pictures like that where they're walking down the beach, but they're a bunch of women and they've locked arms with each other. And I just pray that God would bring all of us women that we can lock arms with that when we go, huh? And go, oh, no, no, no. And we want to turn around. We can't because our arms are locked with people that are going to say, I know that you're scared right now and that's OK, but I'm not going to let go of you because we're going to be afraid. There's going to be challenges. But if we've locked arms with people that we can trust and great cheerleaders that will say when we want to turn around, we're not going to let you, <laughs> God, give that to all of us. Yeah. And that's a good reminder that our calling is not just meant for ourselves. We are not meant to be lone rangers here. Just because we're talking about Moses, Moses didn't go by himself. He had Aaron. And then when the battle and he had to keep his arms up, there was beside him holding up his arms, Aaron and her during the middle of some battles, you know, some battle times. And we like to think, that, you know, we're going into these things by ourselves. But even Esther had Mordecai, even Esther had the eunuchs that were attending to her to make sure that she was doing what she needed to be doing to learn what she needed to learn. God is going to bring the right people alongside of you. So we need to remember when we do link our arms with people, when we are saying yes, we're saying yes to go with the army, the tribe of people that God is calling alongside us for this season to walk this out um, because it's never just for you. It's always for you to do with someone else. That's right. And then we'll be able to say to them when they want to turn around, nope, not going to let you. <laughs> yeah, hold each other up. Awesome. So encouraging today. Thank you so much, Sherilyn. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week. So, uh, you know, we'll send out a graphic for it, but we hope that you will be here next Tuesday, same time, 1230 um, Mountain St Standard Time. And again, we want to always remind you, especially if we have new um, listeners and watchers, that if there's a topic that you want us to cover, make sure you put it in there. And if you don't want to put it in the chat box, you can instant or message us. You can tell I'm not a social media kind of thing, but message one of us and let us know because we want to present to you the things that we're struggling with. But we also want to present the things that you guys are struggling with. So let us know because we, yeah. we want to do that. And, and if this is being a blessing to you, let us know that too. We got this beautiful email from Carol this week and she says that I, um, I, I try to tune in on Tuesdays with you and Tammy or listen to the replay. God is surely using you both to bless others. So thank you, Carol, for that shout out. We really appreciate it. We're encouraged because we do this because God asked us to. And so this is our yes fully displayed in front of you every single week. And so if you are encouraged by what we say, let us know if we're touching a nerve and, you know, let us know that too. If we can pray for you in any way, we want to interact with you in the chat. So let us know. Um, we would, you know, love to have communication with you back and forth. Wonderful. All righty. We will see you next Tuesday. Love you guys. Bye.